Hi everybody, it's Jeff here. I'm back with my first project video. This uh, is going to be a Koa Live Edge shelf with a uh, epoxy resin pour and we're going to make it on the CNC. This was my first epoxy project so I definitely learned some lessons and I'll go ahead and pass those along. first lesson here is this Tyvek tape that I'm using for the form is very cheap and I should have just taped the whole surface here uh, because I wasn't accounting for the fact that you get some epoxy that leaks through because of gravity and not having a perfect seal and you'll see later it it basically epoxied parts of the form onto the shelf that took a lot of work to get apart later. And on the other side of the shelf, you'll see I covered the whole thing with uh, tape. And later on when I go to remove the form, you'll see how much easier this side comes off than the first one. a combination of silicone and hot glue to hold the form together. Uh, the hot glue really was to hold it in place while the silicone was drying. I didn't have to be too careful about getting extra on the workpiece because I was going to surface it and trim off the sides with the CNC later. Here I'm using my digital level to try to get the workpiece at least roughly level for the epoxy pour. It didn't have to be perfect because again I was going to face it with the CNC afterwards. Mixing up the uh, epoxy and figuring out how much dye to put in there, I 
kind of just eyeballed it and uh, I felt like it worked out pretty well. It was about a three to one ratio black dye to this uh, gold powder dye just to give it a little bit of a interesting character. a small amount of leakage so I finished it off after the deep pour had dried which took about four days with some tabletop epoxy a uh, small layer and then heated it up to get rid of any bubbles Back to what I said earlier, uh, another 50 cents in Tyvek tape probably would have prevented me from having to spend all this effort trying to get this piece of MDF off of the bottom of the shelf.
measure the piece out with traditional tape measure and other tools in order to uh, model it in Fusion 360 for the tool paths and then it dawned on me if I just strap it into the CNC machine I could just drive the, uh, the router head around until it was over different points that I wanted to plot out write down the coordinates that showed up in Mach 4 and I would have pretty exact measurements of the outside of the piece. could get to facing the piece I needed to clean up the chunks of MDF that were epoxied onto it from my previous mistake. surfacing I was using Mach 4 to adjust the speed of the cut you can see it slowed down there a little bit and then sped up based on how much material was getting pulled off and then I accidentally went a little too fast there and it actually broke loose from the work holding so here I am readjusting it and then getting it started again
number of finishing passes. Unfortunately, I didn't capture all of them because my camera died without me realizing it. One thing you might notice is I use different directions of cut on the bottom and the top of the shelf. Part of that is because I'm just learning this machine still and I wanted to see which direction would yield a better result. One thing I found helpful in a project like this where you're dealing with an irregular shape is to load up the tool path that you're about to cut in Mach 4 and then drive the, uh, the router head around jogging it on the laptop and just see if it's about to come in contact with anything, which was the case with this clamp. So I removed it, kind of played around with the idea of clamping it right there, but then changed my mind decided it would be safest just to go on the other side, very clear of any of the tool pads.
still learning about direction of cut, feeds and speeds, trying to get used to this machine. And so there was a decent amount of impression left on the workpiece after the surfacing was complete. So I ended up having to do quite a bit of sanding, working from heavy grits to light grits until I finally had it nice and smoothed out, ready for finishing. So that process took a while. A series of tones. When you hear a tone, press and release the button.
the cuts here for the mounting hardware on the ends of the shelf. I accidentally didn't leave enough lead in so that the router was plunging the half inch bit straight into the wood instead of coming in from the side and so you could see it move the workpiece down there even with it clamped in place um, so had to reclamp it re-level it and then recut it with a longer lead in and it worked out great project. I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you liked the music. Have a great day.